Hi friends, it's Terry. Thank you so much for placing an order. In this video, I'm going to give you all the assembly tips for putting your November 2022 Funfold packet together. This is the card you are going to make in your packet. You have all the supplies already cut and ready to be assembled. There's going to be a little bit of work that you need to do. And before I talk about that, I wanna show you some of the new product that I've used for your packet. I use these framed florette dies to create the two oval shapes in your packet. This oval or this die will cut out this image and also this inside piece, which is the outside die in the blushing bride in your packet. And then this die will cut out this frame and an inside piece, which is the basic white die in your packet. So I use these two dies. I also use the designer series paper to create this card. So in your packet, you have one of these different floral images. They are all absolutely beautiful and they all have the blushing bride in them. And that's why I use blushing bride for the color. But if you're duplicating this card using this designer series paper, you could use any color, coordinating color or a different, a different piece of back or background paper I'm using this design as it coordinates with the Blushing Bride. But this is a new paper that's available starting November 1st, and it is only available until January 3rd. The bundle will be available in Stampin' Up's new mini catalog, which comes out in January. So in your packet, you have your instruction card. And just to share, once I get, we assemble this card and the miniature card, I have six additional projects to share at the end of the video. So do watch to the end of the video. So in your packet, the prep work you need to do is you're going to have one of those images you need to cut around here. Now we're going to be putting that on basic white so you don't have to be perfect with this. I actually have mine cut up cut out ahead of time so you can pause the video to catch up to me but if you um, want to start your assembly you're going to want to cut this out ahead of time there's also some stamping I use the stamp set that coordinates with the dies and I use this image in basic gray to stamp one of the two ovals so you have two basic white ovals in your packet so one whoops and be careful, you have lots of little embellishments or several little embellishments. You have two of these. You want to stamp one of them with your inside sentiment. So I've done that ahead of time. And then the other stamping is for the little miniature card that goes in here or on here. There are two um, white circles in here and they're somewhere in here unless I actually took mine out already. Um, I think I took this out. Um, no, there's only one. So there's only one small white circle. So if you want to stamp a sentiment on there, I used hello from the go to greetings and I use basic gray. So those are the that's the prep work along with one more piece. For the miniature card, we're using the hues of happiness paper and you need to fussy cut around this or if you have the coordinating dies, which are the, um, um, goodness, I forgot the name of these dies. They are blooming happiness. They go with the hues of happiness bundle. If you have the dies, you can cut it out with the die or you can fussy cut around that. So I've got that done ahead of time. So two images to cut out and two images to stamp. And then what you need for your adhesives. You need your favorite double-sided adhesive. I'm going to use Stamp and Seal. You need some dimensionals, mini glue dots, and your paper snips to cut this out or the coordinating dies. So we are ready for assembly. So let's just get the right pieces out. There are a few little embellishments in here. You wanna make sure that you don't lose those. And what we um, wanted to do was get the card base. We're gonna start out with the card base. We're gonna start out with the two Blushing Bride square pieces. We also want the designer series paper and the white designer series, or the white cardstock that is um, embossed. So let me give you a little bit details about this. So I feel a little unorganized here. 
So what we want to do is these are the pieces that are going to create the mechanics of the card. And as I mentioned, it's already cut and scored for you. And I failed to tell you it's in the list of what you need, but you also need a bone folder. So we are ready to start. So we have a card base that's already cut for us at 10 and a half by four and a quarter. And it's scored at two and a quarter, I'm sorry, two and a half, three and three quarters, six and three quarters and eight. What we want to do is fold the score lines on the card base to be a mountain fold, a valley fold, a mountain fold, and a valley fold. Now when I designed this card and I made sure that this panel and this panel are the same size so it doesn't matter which side is right or left. You can rotate this accordingly. But when we determine the top front panel, it's got a mountain fold, valley fold. So this is going to be the top left part of the card. This is the right part of the card. What we want to do is fold those and then crease with a bone folder. So you want to crease. And when you do crease, you want to make sure that it's all squared up so you have a square card. So when you crease it, it is going to be five and a half by four and a quarter. So your standard card size. Now what we have here, it says the next step, we're going to take the designer series paper and adhere it to the right edge with equal spacing on the top right edge and left side to the cardstock layer number one, which is a four by four. And there's two of them. These are identical shapes. So we're going to take this paper and adhere it. So we have beautiful double sided designer series papers and it's really hard. Whoops. It's really hard when you have to cover up a beautiful side because they're both beautiful. But we want this side of the paper to coordinate. So now it's telling us that we're going to adhere it to the center panel with equal spacing on the top, bottom, and right edge. So that's creased, the center panel. What that means is we're going to adhere it to the center panel with equal spacing top and bottom and the right edge. Now when we do that, we do have this hanging over. We want no exposed adhesive. So what we're going to do to avoid getting it that adhesive is I'm going to flip this over like this and I'm going to put my adhesive right along here. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but it's right on this edge, not too close to this side or this side. And then I'm going to put it on this side. So with adhesive down here and adhesive right here, I can turn this over, hold it up so the adhesive is not touching and adhering to the cardstock yet got equal spacing top and bottom and on that edge. So all three of those sides are equal. Then I'm going to let the adhesive adhere. Now I've adhered that, that layer one to the center panel and I have no exposed adhesive here. Now the next step it says is that we're going to adhere this layer, cardstock layer number two, which is three and three quarters by three and three quarters. I texturized this with the painted text texture 3D folder. We're going to adhere these two to, on t together. And as I mentioned earlier, these two are the same size and they're indicated as layer one. So we are going to adhere these two together. Now we're going to have to look at adhering this the same way we did that previous layer. So I'm looking at opposite corners to get equal spacing. Now, as I just mentioned, we need to adhere this to the top panel. We're going to look for equal spacing top and bottom and the left side. And we also want it to line up equal here. So what we're going to do, and now this really doesn't have a right um, a definition because our um, there's no you can rotate it any direction if we had a direction to the print you'd want to make sure that you were um, making sure that you got it in the right you have the adhesive here so I put adhesive in here and by the fold not too close to the either edge and now what I'm going to do is lift this up so I don't touch the adhesive I'm going to look for equal spacing on these three. And as I bring it down, 
going to make sure that this lines up. So that lines up like this. And now I don't have any exposed adhesive here. And that's the mechanics of the card. Now you can decorate this and I'm going to show you some other images. Now what we're going to do for the pieces I've given you, we have an oval that's going to hang over the edge a little bit here. And then we have an oval behind it. Now you can kind of tell that if this oval wasn't on front, you would see this oval here. So you got to be aware of that. If your image is not hanging over the edge, anything you put on this middle panel has to be tucked away. So in saying that, we are going to put that this oval on first and we're going to make sure that it is close, really close to the edge here. It looks like I got a little bit of ink when I stamped that. Goodness, sometimes that happens. I'm going to keep going. My videos are unedited. I'm going to keep um, proceeding with the assembly. Now I'm going to leave just a little bit of space here, a little bit of pink blushing bride here, equal spacing top and bottom. And I'm going to adhere here because we want to make sure that the oval that we put on top is going to hide this oval. So that, well, that's what we can do next. What I'm going to do is adhere these two pieces together. You're going to use your favorite adhesive to do that. Now we're going to have this oval hanging over the edge a little bit. And in saying that, um, we want to make sure we have no exposed adhesive. So what I'm going to have you do, and um, now you could use regular adhesive, put a little bit here, but I'm going to put two dimensionals. Now this is a little bit of a guide for me. I know that if I put this oval, if I put my adhesives within that oval shape, I'll be good. What I'm going to do here is on the back side of this, I'm going to put some some dimensionals behind the oval and I'm going to put just halfway. I could go a little bit further over, but I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to take my take your pick tool and help me get these backings off. And now our goal is not to have exposed adhesive. That's why I like using dimensionals when I put on my decorative elements. So if I take all the backings off and this is where I don't have the dimensionals. If I place this equal spacing top and bottom, equal spacing on the sides, then I'm not going to have any exposed adhesive here. And we covered up that oval in the back. So what we have to decorate our card is your decorative element. Now as I mentioned you're going to have different ones. Um, everybody's can, oh, um, Some people are going to have the same ones but there are several to pick from. There are several different designs. So you may have a different design here. Here's a different one on this finished sample. So what I like to do is give a little bit of dimension to this floral piece. So I usually curl it under meaning I'm rotating it down. Then I take the tips and I just take those up. I'm going to put a couple dimensionals behind it just in the middle and then I'm going to attach. So this one doesn't, this one fills up more than this one does but that's still okay. I tied a ribbon or the bow for everybody with the quarter inch crinkled ribbon and I'm going to attach mine with a mini glue dot. So mini glue dots, I like to bring my piece of um, what I'm attaching to the, to the mini glue dot, push it underneath. We don't want any exposed adhesive. And then I'm going to put my bow right on the edge here. In your packet, you have three of these opal rounds. I gave you three because some flowers have one center, some have two, and some people are going to receive this image which has three. So I intended those to be for the center of your flowers and if you don't need all of them then you have you have extra for a future project. 
So I'm going to actually just use the two smaller ones for this element. And that is going to complete our card. And as I mentioned, I have several samples to share with you, so um, stay tuned for that. But first we want to assemble this little miniature card, which will be our visual for this fun fold project. So you have a piece of basic white cardstock that's cut and scored. We want to make a mountain fold, valley fold, mountain fold, valley fold. And you want to use your bone folder and, and make sure you get those all squared up and adhere these down, okay? So now we have two Granny Apple Green. Those are representing a small version of what the Blushing Bride is. We have a piece of basic white that's texturized. And instead of designer series paper, we have some um, texturized cardstock. So we want to adhere these to the Granny Apple Green. And there's going to be a little bit of a border on top, bottom, and right side. And I'm going to go ahead and adhere this at the same time here. So this will be our little visual of what this fun fold is attached to the instructions. You've also received a PDF that has the pictures and the same instructions. So what we want to do is take this panel and adhere it to this center panel. I'm going to put adhesive right on this edge. I'm going to flip this over and just put one strip of adhesive on this edge. Look for equal spacing, top, bottom, and this edge, and place this in. And looks like mine's going to go right to the edge here. I um, played around with these dimensions. Hopefully I so usually there's a space there. We're going to go right to the edge this time. Maybe I eyeballed it wrong. I, I have a disadvantage for the angle that I have with the camera. So um, you might go right to the edge here. So I apologize for that. You might want to trim like a sixteenth of an inch off. Um, these packets are already in the mail, so I can't take them apart. They are already in the mail. So sorry about that. So for here we want to put adhesive on this edge, adhesive on this edge. And now what we're going to do is look for equal spacing, the white spacing, line up that. So that's going to be how this little sample is going to be put together. We have these two layers to put together for the inside. And there's, if you make this card again, there's so many variations you can do. You can have this layer go all the way in. You don't have to have just a portion of it. Um, you can make lots of modifications. So what we're going to do is put this little hello just almost right there. Now what we want to do is have this be covered up. So we want to go right into here. Now the flowers are all different colors that you might have in your packet. Everybody has the granny apple green with the bow punch. And then whatever color your flower is, you've got a center to be the same. So what I like to do, just like I did on the previous one, is turn these flowers, rotate inward, and then turn the tips up. I just usually put a couple dimensionals right in the center. That leaves some space for me to tuck in my greenery. And I'm going to place this right here. And then what I'm going to do is take the paper snips and goodness, did I, oh, here it is. I'm gonna cut this off. That's gonna allow us to get that tucked underneath a little bit. And I'm gonna put it in like here. And then what I'm going to do is just take mini glue dots and we'll attach a mini glue dot on the bottom two leaves. I don't worry about the rest and also the reason you don't want to worry about the rest or adhere, they're going to hang over the edge if you're assembling it like I am. So when I do this, when I say hang over the edge, it's going to hang over this piece right here and there we go. 
So we just want to make sure that we just don't have that exposed adhesive. And then this last panel is to sign your card. As long as you stay away from the very edge of the border, you have that whole panel, that whole panel to write another message and sign the card. So what you can do for this is put adhesive on the, there's just this small back panel and we'll fold this up here. And this will be your little instruction card. And I forgot to attach your little adhesive element. So that's the dot. So this is the fun fold in this packet. I have an extra one of those. Whoops. So here is the little miniature card for the instructions. And you are going to have a card similar to this. And when I say similar, your flower might be different than I have here. So let me show you some additional samples that I have. Here's the same card layout, and I used the Candy Cane Designer Series paper and added some elements. And I used the sentiment from the Candy Cane stamp set here. And here I also used the banner punch to get that piece. So this is another idea using real red cardstock. I have another idea. This sentiment is also from the stamp set. This is the Bows of Holly Designer Series paper. I absolutely love this. I use the um, champagne rhinestones in the center of the flowers. I use the same ovals that we used right here. And I have, um, this is Evening Evergreen cardstock. So the same basic dimensions or same dimensions that I have for your card here. Here's another card that I use, the Bows of Holly, and I use the stamp set called Marius Moments for the joy with the double oval punch. This is the Hues of Happiness. I'm sorry, the Bows of Holly designer series paper. And this is the country wreath die that bows from that die also. And this is from this same sentiment. So another card using the Bows of Holly and a fun holiday card to make. I have another card. This is the Bows of Holly Designer Series paper. And this is the um, Fond of Autumn bundle and go to greetings for the thinking of you. And the sentiment here is from the Pansy Patch. I really like this sentiment. I use it a lot for different cards. But here's another sample and you can see how I'm hanging the banners over and the images over on this side. I did make a second banner to put on here, turned it over so I didn't see the back side of the stitched banner. And um, you just want for this oval, same thing. You just want to make sure they don't hang over the edge for that exposed adhesive. I have two more samples to share with you. Here's one with the um, Goodness, I already I want to say cottage rose. I think it's called cottage rose, and this is pool party, the same sentiment. This is go to greetings, and this is the pansy patch. I use the timber folder on this piece and the um, time worn type folder for this one. And one last card to show you this is with the hues of happiness and the granny apple green and um, very similar to the previous cards. So that's so much fun when you have a fun fold that you um, can use any of your existing product or future product with. So I hope you enjoyed this fun fold. Thank you again for placing an order with me. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. Take care and happy creating.